ever generated an AI character that was almost perfect, but the pose was wrong or the camera angle just didn't tell the story in your head. Sometimes the exact pose or composition you need is just too specific to describe in words. And that's why we need advanced control. Today, I'll show you how to fix that with DSi's new control mode. Three powerful tools that give you automate control over camera angles, poses, and composition of your custom characters. By the end of this video, you'll know how to make those characters look exactly the way you imagine. Let me show you how this works. You can grab the link below to get started. First on DSi, let's get to a new project. Open the character tab from the global sidebar. Go into generate images, then we'll pick the character we want to work with. You can either pre from their preset or your own custom character. Today, I'm picking Anna. Under the character description setting, you'll see that Anna's features, including her outfit and sometimes even her style are preloaded based on the train images. If you'd like her to wear something different, you can customize it here. For example, I'll add silver high heels and maybe a sun hat. Just type your changes directly into the description field. And next, under the character action and scene, this is where you define what she's doing. You'll notice the add Anna tag is already included, which makes sure that the scene uses the selected character. And here, simply describe the action you want. In this case, I'm writing standing alone in the middle of an open sunlit pink floral field. And I also added a few extra descriptive details to give the scene a more cinematic feel. Finally, under control mode, you'll see three options, camera, pose, and reference. Each one gives you different ways to guide the final image. The first feature is camera control. Sometimes when we try to guide the camera angle or character direction using just text prompts, the results can be hit or miss. But with camera control, you can easily set the scene exactly the way you envision it. If you click on the camera tab, you'll see a range of character directions and camera shots to choose from. The direction options include front, back, left, and right. While shot options include close up, upper body, full body, and wide shot. By default, it's set to auto, but you can mix and match however you like. Let's try selecting back view and full body. This combination is actually one of the hardest to get right with just text prompt alone. Many models struggle with rendering accurate back views and full body compositions sometimes, even when you put it in the text prompt. But with camera control, it's much more reliable. You can also adjust the aspect ratio here. Several options are available depending on your intended output. And next, we can choose the style. There are many preset styles you can choose from from Design Style Library. For this example, I want to make the scene more cinematic. So I'll select the Design Cinematic to reinforce the mood. Another feature worth noting is that you now have the options to create not safe for work content. You can simply toggle off non-explicit for that. And I'm keeping it turned on for safe content here, but it's great to know the flexibility is there. As for the generation mode, you can switch between speed, which is faster, and quality, which offers better detail. For this one, I'll stick with quality. Now let's click generate. As you can see, the result is exactly what we wanted. We have a clean and full body back view here. Compared to this other image where I only use text prompts like back view and full body, and the difference is clear. Camera control makes it much easier to achieve the exact perspective you're aiming for. Next, let's try pose control. Once you turn on pose control, design will show you character facing forward with a skeleton on top. This skeleton has dots that mark important parts of the body, like the shoulders, elbows, and wrists. You can move your mouse over each dot to see where it should go. Most of the time, Design puts the dots in the right place automatically, but if anything looks off, you can click and drag the dots to fix it to the right place. There's also a helpful example animation showing how the skeleton should align with the character's D pose here. Once everything looks aligned, click Edit Pose. Inside the Pose Editor, you'll see a 3D space where you can zoom in and out. And we can also click and drag on empty space to rotate the scene around. This helps you view the pose from different angles. You can adjust each joint by dragging the dots to form the pose you want. When you move one dot, it moves that part of the body and the rest of the skeleton updates along with it. Also, you can rotate the head by clicking around the head area and a control sphere will appear so we can move the head 
up and down or from side to side. Just remember the two pink dots on the side represent the ears, which helps you understand the direction your head is facing. If you ever get confused or want to start fresh, just click the reset to default button at the top. So it will go back to the T pose. On the right hand side, you'll find a bunch of preset poses. These are great as starting points. Just click one to load it in and then we can fine tune the pose from there. Let's say I want to create a really exaggerated high fashion pose. You know, those poses that are probably impractical in real life, but it somehow totally work in fashion. I'll go ahead and adjust the skeleton to match that kind of vibe. Is this weird enough? Once you're happy with the pose, click save to save your custom pose. Now back in the canvas view, we can adjust the character's positions directly on the canvas or fine tune the angle by clicking the control sphere in here. You can also return to the edit pose mode anytime if you like to make more adjustments. From here, you can change the text prompt under action and scene and adjust any other settings like style or aspect ratio the way you want. Once everything looks good, we can generate and bring our image to life. I think the outcome looks perfectly aligned with the pose that we assigned. And this kind of dramatic pose, I could probably never pull off without pose control. Now, full body shots sometimes come with a few AI hiccups, like these funky AI hands. But no worries, we can fix that using the hand repair feature in AI editor. Just select the hand area, hit generate, and it will create a more natural, realistic result. We can also further enhance the image for more high quality results. With human portrait, we can select the portrait type for strength. I will select standard so it's closer to our original image. And just like that, the image is ready for a fashion magazine cover and with the pose just the way we imagine. Now let's try reference control. Click pick image to upload a reference photo you want to use as inspiration. You can upload an image from your computer or select a layer directly from the canvas. Then we'll then use that image to guide the pose, layout, camera angle, and sometimes even the visual style of the final result. For example, I want to recreate this flying kick pose from Bruce Lee. This kind of action is super hard to describe with just text. And that's where reference control really helps. We'll still describe the action and scene here, something like Anna is performing a flying kick mid-air. Let's click generate and see what we get. And just like that, one reference image is all it takes to guide the pose and composition of your image. It's a super easy way to replicate movie scenes, iconic visuals, or anything that's tricky to describe with words alone. Sometimes, and also in this case, the character can blend a bit too much with the reference image. The output didn't give us the outfit we wanted and ended up mixing elements from Bruce Lee's outfit into our character. To fix this, I find a workaround. Let's reinforce the outfit by copying and pasting the outfit description again down here in the prompt and generate again. And see now with the new results, the outfit looks much more aligned with what we wanted. And these are just small tricks to help balance the influence of the reference image with the text prompt. Sometimes the reference image can dominate the result a bit too much. So repeating the key parts of your prompt, like the outfit description here, is the simple trick to bring things back on track. And that's a control mode in design. Powerful, easy to use, and packed with creative flexibility. And if you're ready to take your AI character to the next level, try it out yourself with the link below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.